So Manchester United lost to West Ham yesterday and I'm not happy, I don't feel good, but they've got a good week's rest before Wolves. This will be the first time Manchester United have a week's rest since Christmas and hopefully in that week the takeover will start to settle, we'll start to get some news on the takeover. And some more news has come in today and yesterday actually, it's a little bit different to the general stories. The general stories have been that Sir Jim is in pole position, Ineos are in pole position, you know the Glazers like the idea of staying. But actually Sky Sports and uh, Sam Wallace of The Telegraph have been saying actually new revelations now and new stuff now that actually Qatar are so far in this, Qatar can't lose. Qatar really deep in this, the Glazers just want to get as much money as they can out of Qatar, suggesting that they believe actually it's just a matter of making sure Qatar hit that price point and the Glazers could go, etc, etc. So we're going to get into that news that actually Qatar could be pretty close in this takeover and actually, you know, there could be something more going on with Qatar's side because I think the general feeling is, oh my God, the Glazers are saying directly the statement is awful. There is some indication of Qatar. As always, I think with the takeover, you just don't know what's true and what's not true. These are good journalists, these are good, reliable journalists reporting things. I'm sure they've got a good source, but we get fed so much from the takeover. We don't know what's going to happen in it, really, and, and, until we actually find out what happened. Because one story, we'll probably get a story that's completely different tonight. But anyway, after that, I will be getting into five things we learned from Manchester United. Neil, West Ham won. I will talk about five things we learned from the West Ham loss, as well as some transfer news on David De Gea going, De Gea actually Ten Hag secretly wanting David De Gea going behind the scenes, goalkeepers United's looking at, uh, Kim and JT United and more. So we've got a bit of transfer news, so we'll do takeover news, transfer news, and then five things we learned. So smash the like, smash the subscribe, and let's get into the video. So it was said by Sam Wallace, he went on Sky Sports, there's a video on YouTube, and he did a little bit of an interview, and the main, I'll get the main quote of what he said, and then I'll talk, dabble around other things that he said. He said, there's one obvious destination, and that's Qatar. Ineos have tried to make it work in different ways, but my feeling is Qatar is so far in, it's become a question of prestige. They have to win this. That is what Sam Wallace is saying. He's saying, I feel that Qatar, he also sort of said that I feel like Qatar have the biggest beer, I feel like Qatar have the biggest prize, and I feel like the Glazers want to sell for the biggest prize. And, you know, he was saying his feeling is that Qatar is so deep in this, Qatar is so advanced in this, you know, they can't lose now. You know, they, they, it's about like how they look. They can't lose now. They can't give up now. They want this. They've made this 92 foundation. They're so involved in this that they can't lose now. And that they have put in the biggest offer and the Glazers will upset the biggest offer is what they believe. But the question is, are the Glazers open to staying? Jim Ratcliffe's offer proposes two of the Glazers an option to stay. He's saying that, you know, Qatar is so deep in this that he feels that Jim Ratcliffe has had to work on another bid to keep the Glazers staying work on different types of bids because Jim Ratcliffe cannot compete with Qatar and Jim Ratcliffe wants to win this so he's trying different things because Qatar is so deep in this that if Sir Jim tried to do what Qatar was doing he couldn't um and he said that obviously it's being reported the different prices every kind of outlet saying Ineos bid this Qatar bid this he said you know they're reporting that Qatar bid just over five billion the Telegraph but he's saying the feeling in Qatar is that they have to win this um you know Rick Ratcliffe has to bid a different way to try and match this um, you know, and it, it's kind of like a game of chess, really. The Glazers, it, you know, it's up to the Glazers. It's in the Glazers' hands. You know, they, they don't know if it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be Sir Jim. It's a game of chess, but the feeling is that the Glazers could be playing this game of chess because they just want Qatar to hit that certain price point and could be using Sir Jim to do that. But it's just a little bit of a story, basically, where some sources are saying, you know, Qatar are really deep in this. This is Qatar. This is the 92 Foundation. They want United. They're serious about United. They know they're financially more capable than Jim Ratcliffe. They've got other people backing them. That the kind of suggestion that's being made by the media is actually really, you know, well, look, this is Qatar. They really want United. Like, they can beat Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Let's not listen to what the rain group's leaking. Let's not listen to these stories. Let's just see what happens because you never know. They might, this could just be a game to make sure Qatar bid higher and maybe Qatar are going to get another chance to bid and bid higher. Um, it's the Glazers. They'll probably drag on this deal to September if it means they're going to get more money. Let's be honest. Look, as I said, I really hope it's Qatar. I think especially after watching FA's performance, we need owners that are going to invest in the squad. We need a lot of investment. We need a lot of investment behind Tenor. The squad depth isn't good enough. We need a goalkeeper. We need a centre back. We need two midfielders. We need a striker. We, you know, we're such a long way off Manchester City. We're getting better and better and better. They could be winning the treble, and it feels like we're never going to catch them unless we get um, Middle Eastern owners in. And Sergio Ratcliffe won't be able to do what Qatar can do. Sergio Ratcliffe can't clear the debt. He can't build a new stadium. He's not going to invest in the women in the youth team. So. You know, that that is the big problem as well. But, um, you know, the main thing that was said by Sam Wallace is he thinks it's down to hitting a certain number. He thinks the takeover is down to maybe Qatar hitting a certain number. And if they hit that number, then the Glazers would sell to Qatar. 
Now, obviously, hopefully the takeover will sort itself out soon because Tenog wants stuff in the transfer window. Tenog wants lots of bits and pieces done in the transfer window. And unfortunately, not much has been done. But what was said regarding transfers, and take this first story with a pinch of salt, because the first stories come from the Daily Express, and the Daily Express, yeah, it's not most reliable. But the Daily Express was saying, Manchester United ready to fork out £53 million to land Kim Min Jae. The Napoli defender could replace Maguire, who's expected to leave in the summer. Now they're saying Maguire expected to leave United, willing to fork out £53 million on Kim and Jay. There's probably some truth in that. I think Kim and Jay and Timber and Sassy, what was he called? I forgot his name. United have clearly been looking at, and I think Maguire will leave, and I think we will look to sign a centre back. But um, again, I wouldn't take that one it was too seriously until we get the take of it moving. It was also said on David Day on the goalkeeper position by Samuel Luckhurst that they're growing doubts at Manchester United over De Gea's position as the club's number one beyond the season. Although manager Eric Tenog publicly backed David De Gea's, sources say some at the club have reservations over De Gea's extended contract. While it has been assumed that a new deal for De Gea would secure his first choice status, it is understood some figures at Manchester United want to move on from the Spaniard. So suggesting basically actually De Gea, you know, you know, Tenog's always going to publicly back his players. Tenog's always going to publicly back De Gea and have De Gea's back publicly. But it's said that actually, you know, Tenog might be looking at keeping De Gea as a second option. Actually, Tenog is open to new goalkeepers. We have been linked to Raya. We have been linked to Diogo Costa. We have been scouting Diogo Costa. So there's got to be some truth for a while that Tenog's been looking at goalkeepers when we've been scouting goalkeepers. I 100% I believe that. And I think, you know, David De Gea's flaws are kind of getting shown up more and more, especially in these important games where we need to beat Sevilla or we need to beat West Ham for top four, you know, and the, the FA Cup semi-final or final a few years ago against Chelsea, you know, his flaws do show up in those big games. He does make those mistakes. Um, you know, he's not good at claiming crosses. You know, there's a lot of weaknesses to De Gea's game. And I think, you know, the feeling is even if De Gea signs a new contract, that doesn't mean he's number one. It's got to take a significant wage reduction if he wants to sign a new contract. That won't keep him as number one. And actually, despite Tenag who publicly praised De Gea, he might actually quite, quite, quite want a new keeper and he just doesn't want to knock their confidence and he's not going to bash his players because we know that Tenog actually wants Maguire gone and we, and we know that Tenog wants Maguire sold but he would never say that publicly he always praises Maguire because he's not going to call he doesn't want to cause an issue with the squad or the dressing room now let's get into five things we learned from the game let me know in the chat would you keep the hair would you sell the hair I still think striker and midfield is a bigger priority than goalkeeper but I do think long term the hair is going to have to go if he you know if he's making these mistakes and just can't claim the cross, and I think his weaknesses are being exposed. But we are going to do five things we learned. Um, the first thing we learned, and let me know if you agree, is that David Gea's time is up. I do think, you know, we're at the point where Manchester United are going to need a goalkeeper that can claim those crosses, that can come off from their line, that can sweep the ball. We get to Gea gives the ball away, he's not claiming those crosses. West Ham are lucky to have one of the goals ruled out. I thought it was soft. You know, I, I just think De Gea is... He's a good shot stopper, but all his other flaws are really adding on us, especially when the pressure gets going. And especially now we don't have Lissandro Martinez, who builds up from the back, which is my next point. And we've got to be better building up from the back. De Gea lacks that. He, you know, he's not good at playing out from the back. And I think we're at the point where De Gea's flaws are really showing. And I think a new goalkeeper could really help develop the way we play. You know, remember when Dean Henderson played at Upton Park for us and we won, what, 3-1 and we were brilliant, not Upton Park, but the West Ham Stadium, and, you know. Um, Olympic part, sorry, and we were a lot better. Now I'm not saying that Dean Emerson is all all this much better than Hay or anything like that, but I'm saying we do we did we play our best football under Ollie when Dean Emerson was in goal. You know, when we were second, we did, and I, I I do think when you have a goalkeeper that's more comfortable on the ball, it can change the way that the whole team in front plays. You know, and, and I do think that if we do get a new goalkeeper, I'll be honest, I do think it will change the way we play and I do think it will help the defence and the midfield and, and us in possession and, and other aspects of our game. I do think we'll get to the point where actually, and I hate to say this because I don't want to turn to one of those people who thinks David Hay is the biggest problem at United. I know we need a striker, I know we need a midfielder, but I do slowly start to believe De Gea is holding us back. The second thing we learned is no Martinez, no build-up. We are really missing the presence of Lissandra Martinez in build-up. I actually think we're just missing that spine of Lissandra Varane and Casemiro for the mentality as well. But I think massively Lissandra Martinez in build-up, getting the ball from defence to midfield, getting someone that's comfortable on the ball, carrying the ball out from the back. You know, I think we just don't look comfortable in possession. We, we, we're not getting the ball to the midfield as quick. We're not getting the ball to the attack as quick. We're just not as good in possession, I think. The midfield wasn't as good today. I think, you know, defence was solid. And I don't think the defence did anything wrong. I thought the defence was good against West Ham. I thought they were sixes and sevens. But without Martinez, our build-up really lacks. And I think we're really missing, you know, the possession, how we keep the ball. The general way we're playing is so poor. And I think I really realised that actually as good as Luke Shaw has been, 
Martinus has such a unique character in the way that he's so comfortable on the ball. He contributes so much to build up. He can sometimes turn into a midfielder that I think, you know, we're massively missing that. The third thing we learned is that Manchester United cannot take chances. And Bruno said this in his interview. We create a lot of chances, we're not converting them. Manchester United have created the third most amount of chances in the Premier League this season. Man United have created the third most amount of big chances this Premier, in the Premier League this season. And Manchester United should have scored the third the most amount of goals in the Premier League this season with the chances we created, but we're ranked 16th for conversion. And that is because Ronaldo wasn't firing, Rashford's a winger, not a striker, Anthony doesn't really fire away, Sanchez doesn't really fire away, Martial missed two chances he had that I think Kane and Ossenham would have scored. That is the problem. United cannot take their chances and that is really starting to cost us this season the fourth thing we learned is that we need the old Casemiro back he's dropped off since I thought since he was really good the other game but he's but he's dropped off since the red card um, I don't know if it's like a psychology thing I, it's definitely affected him and I think we never lost the game where Casemiro Bruno and Eriksson have started together that's the first time today yesterday sorry we lost the game with Casemiro Bruno and Eriksson lost together and the midfield just dropped and because Casemiro's dropping Eriksson's dropping and when Eriksson's dropping Bruno's dropping. We need Casemiro on it because then Ericsson and Bruno will also be more on it and will also have more freedom to create and, and will be better on the ball. And I think maybe Casemiro is missing that. The Sandra Martin is behind him as well. The fifth and final thing we learn from the game is no to Vegos. No to Vegos in a number 10 role. When Bruno's out wide accommodating Vegos, it doesn't work. Bruno is wasted out wide. Put Bruno in the middle where he can have an impact on the game. I have to say, about Vegos, is useless. I hate saying this about United player, but he is useless. He's not good. If you're going to play him, play him in his natural position, which is a striker. Get him to press. If, you, if you're tuned up and you need to defend the league, get Vegos to press, etc, etc. But he's not good enough for United and he should not be playing in Bruno's position. We should not be accommodating Bruno for Vegos. And that is the problem I have. Anyway, smash the like, smash the subscribe. Thank you for watching today's, today's video. See you next time. Bye.